Hi everyone, this is Chris Ng here, and this is a video adjunct just talking about nutrition and listeria in pregnancy. So I'm going to be going through three questions and just to design to test your knowledge around nutrition in pregnancy. So the first question is, what is the recommended amount and duration of folic acid supplementation before conception for a low-risk patient? This is a really critical topic as neural tube defects are devastating and often lead to fatal anomalies as well. And this can be easily reduced and prevented by supplementation of folic acid. So I'm going to give you a couple more seconds to lock in your choice. All right, so the correct answer from our SOGC guidelines is that women of childbearing age consume 0.4 milligrams of folic acid for at least three months prior to, to pregnancy. And, that, and if someone is actually higher risk, they should actually consume uh, sort of four milligrams of folic acid for at least three months prior to conceiving. Question number two, how many extra calories should a pregnant patient be consuming? Are they eating for two? I'll give you a couple seconds to lock in your answer now. All right, so when we take a look at the 2016 guidelines on female nutrition, we find out that in the, it, the, the answer to this question really depends on where, you, where the, patient, the patient is in her pregnancy. So in the first trimester, you are definitely not eating for two. Your little bun is just like, yay big. So no additional energy is required. In the second trimester, this goes up to about 300. Uh, and the, in the third trimester, it goes up to 450. So somewhere between 300 and 500 extra calories a day, which is not as much as people think it is. 300 calories is like an apple and a yogurt. It's super depressing. And again, in terms of weight gain in pregnancy, for the most part, most of the weight gain should be fairly neutral early on. And it's really, we only expect to see weight gain in, in the second and third trimesters. Most of that weight sh should be around 25 to 35 pounds for people of normal body habitus, but for most of us who are slightly overweight, at least around 15 to 25 pounds. My final question for you is, which of the following foods are you most concerned about pregnant people eating? Is that gonna be A, prepackaged salad, B, deli meats, or C, raw sushi. Mm. All right, let's see what you guys picked. As funny as it is, the one I'm actually worst, most worried about is actually prepackaged salad. And it's not because I hate veggies, uh, which I kind of do. So this is a, one of our, uh, an article from the CBC just talking about listeria. I'm sure you guys have seen this in the news every so often that, you know, prepackaged salad gets flagged for having listeria. This is sort of a common uh, salad brand that I get from Costco often for my wife, so. So why should we care about listeriosis? So listeria is challenging because it multiplies despite refrigeration. And even with washing, even with the triple washing that happens on salad, there's often a biofilm of this bacteria present. And this is the most lethal cause of food poisoning with about 20 or 30 deaths um, in Canada. So, and in pregnancy, pregnant, pregnant women are much more susceptible to listeriosis, 115 times higher, and almost a quarter of listeriosis actually occurs in pregnancy. And really this is thought to be a lack of cell-mediated immunity that's present in pregnant people in the third trimester. So they're just more susceptible to it. So, okay, so why do we care though? Just a little bit of food poisoning. Well, listeria can actually be transmitted through the placenta and its effects on pregnancy are devastating. This causes miscarriage in about 10 to 20%, and if it happens later on in pregnancy where it typically happens, preterm delivery happens in half of all pregnancies, we see meconium staining, which is, either, is often a marker of, of fetal stress, occurring in about 75% of, of these pregnancies, and stillbirth happens in over 10% of these pregnancies, which is devastating. Even if you get through the pregnancy, two thirds of the surviving infants will actually suffer from neonatal listeriosis, which results in mortality between 20 and 60%. and can result in pneumonia, sepsis, and meningitis. So this really is devastating. As for sushi, which I think a lot of you guys would have picked, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because when's the last time you were food poisoned by a sushi restaurant? They would go out of business so quickly. Um, officially, Canada's uh, health uh, handa still recommends not eating sushi, but in the UK, uh, they actually recommend, the National Health Service actually recommends that you are actually safe to eat sushi. Farm salmon doesn't actually need to be typically frozen, but if you are going to eat raw fish, almost all the proper sushi restaurants will freeze it for a long period of time to kill off any parasites or any other bacteria that are present. So no, you actually are welcome to eat sushi in pregnancy. 
Only thing that we do caution you is that larger fish like tuna that eat other fish do concentrate mercury down and we do ask that you limit sort of the servings of, of tuna to sort of one serving a week. And that's it for this video adjunct. Hopefully you learned something and you're going to be extra cautious when eating your salad. Okay, take care.